Hello, welcome to the fifth episode of Charity Cup Chats this week. I'm delighted to be joined by former shrimper Taylor Moore. Taylor, how are you, mate? I'm good, thank you. I'm good. Thanks for having me. Good. Um, so, obviously, before we start, the point of doing all these podcasts is to raise money for Justin Edinburgh Foundation and Haven's Hospice. So, if anyone watching this are enjoying the videos, please do donate in the link in the description. We've raised almost £700 now, and it'd be great to keep on going. So, Taylor, I'm going to start off by talking about the one thing on everyone's mind. How's lockdown? It's good. It's all right. It's, um, it's been up and down. I think everyone's kind of in the same boat and everyone would agree that up and down is probably the, the correct term of how to describe it. Um, yeah. I think when it first came about, uh, everyone was a bit uncertain, everyone was a bit worried. But it was actually nice to, to for me personally, I came back to London. So yeah. I came back to my mum's and I've been spending time here with my brothers as well. So it was nice to actually come back and spend a bit of time with them. Yeah. But now I think it's got to the point where it's just a bit, it's just a bit too long. And yeah. uh, it, it's more, I'd say it's more boring now than anything else. You just want to get back to, to a kind of routine and playing football. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been okay. How, how have you been? You've been all right? Yeah, same here. I think it's just, it's all right at first. You get to focus on things you probably wouldn't have done, but now it has got to that stage where you just want to be back out getting well yeah. with your normal life. Exactly, exactly that. And I think even for, for us playing football, you, you try and keep as fit as possible. Yeah. Um, but it's a lot easier said than done. Yeah. Especially if you're trying to keep as fit as, as we have to be like at that level. Yeah. Um, it is quite difficult. And the uncertainty of it all, especially in League One, League Two, I think where yeah. they're pushing decisions back week on, like, week on week, you're trying to get to a point of fitness where you're ready, raring to go. And all of a sudden, you're being told, oh no, actually, we've got to wait another 15 days for yeah. a decision. So it's like pushing your body, but also managing your recovery as well. Have the uh, players been told anything or do you find out just as when the fans find out too? I think we, uh, as so obviously I'll speak on, on my behalf, my yeah. uh, experience personally is with Blackpool and they've been, they've been quite good. Uh, they've basically got all the boys and the chairman and the, uh, the manager into a Zoom call. The minute they've had some news and they've, kind of kept us updated yeah but going back to what you say there it's it's all pretty similar it's all coming out in the press so the fans yeah. and us are all kind of uh learning at the same time and, and finding finding out all these different information at the same time yeah how do you cope with that as obviously being a defender because you're not really supposed to be out with other people you can't defend if there's no one there how do you deal with that and i think uh from, from my case personally obviously i'm on loan from bristol city and yeah Knowing that they're going back to training, contact training, matches. Yeah. Obviously, say say the decision tomorrow or, or Tuesday, whenever it may be, is negative. Then I won't be kicking a ball until August, September time. Yeah. You wouldn't you wouldn't usually have that period of time with no football unless you've got a serious injury. Yeah, and so obviously, it, like you said, there. How do you compete with lads that are going to be match fit? Yeah. When you go back, how can you make sure you're ready? And it's difficult to to try and to try and do. Um, yeah. I've been I've been quite lucky. I've, like I said, I've been at home with I've got three younger brothers. Yeah, uh, they they would play football as well. So oh, cool. Whenever, whenever I needed someone to kind of uh, come and help me a little bit, I, I've been doing it with them. And um, I actually did a bit of training with one of the lads from Bristol City. All oh, right. Uh, um, so Benica Phoebe, he was a striker. Yeah. So, we we both made sure uh, we were like sensible with it. It was yeah. all at a distance, but it was good to actually interact with someone, another professional footballer. If you know what I mean. Yeah. When does your loan spell at Blackpool end? So, as it stands, uh, speaking today, it could be different tomorrow depending yeah. on the decision. Uh, as it stands, it's until the end of the season. So, okay. if we do play the other nine games, then brilliant. But, oh, sweet. Uh, I need to go back and that. I want to be playing. Yeah, uh, but uh, it was alone until the end of the season. Just with all, all of this, it's been a yeah, been a bit difficult one. Yeah, so I'm going to start off to going back to your childhood. Yeah, um, was you six years old when you joined West Ham's academy? Yeah, so I was playing. Uh, so originally from Walthamstow, mm -hmm. uh, North East London, and I was playing quite local. I was just playing for a club called Debden Sports, like nothing special, and then. Bit by bit, I started to integrate the West Ham like development academy. So I think when you're six, seven years old, it is 
basically just going down every Thursday night or whatever it was and, and doing a training session with West Ham coaches. Yeah. Uh, which was good, actually, which is good. And basically, when I was seven, uh, so I was still really young, so I yeah. only did that for about a year. Uh, when I was seven, my mum and dad had a house out in France for holidays and long weekends. Yeah. And I think they were both just fed up at the time of living and working in London. Mm-hmm. So they just said, listen, like, boys, so it was myself and my younger brother at the time, would you like to go out to France for one year? So obviously we just, like, yeah, definitely. Yeah. For us at that age, it was like going on holiday for a year. Yeah. So we, um, we just jumped, jumped at the opportunity, said yes. And lo and behold, we were out there for 12 years. We ended up, uh, ended up staying out there for 12 years. Cool. Did you uh, speak French when you joined, uh, when you moved there, or was it something you no, learned no, no, all the time? No. I was seven years old, like I said, and just thrown in at the deep end. I yeah. uh, went straight into a, uh, a French speaking pool, like, didn't really have any French knowledge at all. Yeah. Uh, literally, we moved out there, and within the space of a couple of days, we were in the classrooms. We were like, oh, wow. Yeah. And cool. I think when you go, when you got like a, a bit of a, a break or lunch break or whatever it is and you're able to kick a football yeah like it kind of breaks down a lot of language barriers as well yeah if you're better than them (laughs) (laughs) so i'm probably going to get my pronunciation wrong here but when you was 12 you was scouted by fc lons yeah rc lons yeah so i was playing for playing for a local club out in france just one of the like one of the clubs from the area we were living in and um basically just from there they said listen would you like to go and do a couple of scouting days which I did um and everything went really really well so I think when I was about it was when I was 11 Lons kind of were the they still are for me they are the biggest club in that area yeah uh, northern France and, and they basically said listen you're 11 years old you live an hour and a half away from here we really want to take you on but that means you're gonna have to come to boarding school you're gonna have right. to join the academy come to boarding school and everything and at the time, I think my mum was just about to have like, my youngest brother. Yeah. And at the time, I just felt that I wanted it. Just, I was so young. I was 11 years old. Like, I couldn't yeah. really commit to that straight away. So what I, what I did is I said to Lons, I said, listen, what I'll do is I'll, I'll sign with you now. I'll sign the contract now for meaning that I'll come next year. Yeah. So I delayed it one more year. And, and at the age of 12, I went in, went into the academy. Like I said, joined the boarding school, uh, went away and, it, it was brilliant. I was there for seven years in total. Yeah. Coming through the ranks. So, yeah, joined as a 12 year old and, and left when I was 19. Yeah, you was originally scouted as a striker, wasn't you? And then gradually transitioned yeah, into defence. So I kind of played played a couple of different positions, especially when you're younger, you can just be thrown in. Anyway. Yeah. I, I was actually quite tall, quite, yeah. quite strong and, and fast at the time. Uh, so I just I just play anywhere. I was playing up front. I was playing right wing. I was playing centre mid. I was playing at the back. Um, yeah. just, just and I think that was the case until I was about fifteen, sixteen, where maybe not as so much as a striker, but I then kind of dropped into a midfield role. Yeah, and I was just playing as a defensive midfielder all the time, uh, and sometimes helping out as a centre back. And then when I was sixteen, someone kind of sat me down and said, "Listen, like I think you can be a defender." Yeah. Um, and you'll have a better career as a defender than you will as a midfielder. Yeah. It's a tough one to take, really, because at the age of 15, 16, the last thing you want to do is defend. Yeah. Um, but, no, I'm, I'm glad that person did actually uh, sit me down and, and make that decision with me. Yeah. Um, how, big, how big of a difference is French football to the English game? Um, I'd say the massive difference out there is, is based on technique. Yeah. I think, don't get me wrong, you get some very, very technical players here in England and I think over the past few years English the English game's changed massively and it's caught up yeah but I I just think it is based a lot around technique and and tactics and as soon as in in England it is a lot more physical yeah especially when you look at the Premier League Championship even like top top of League One yeah get players that are brought in uh, athletically good technically good uh, smart so on and off the ball um, so I think definitely the English game is caught up, but the French game is all about technique yeah. and, and, and possession and similar to the Spanish style, really. Yeah. So when you were 16, you were scouted by the England setup, and you helped to win the under-17 championships alongside Joe Gomez, Tamia Abraham. You scored a penalty in the final. How do you describe that experience? Because 
obviously when I was talking to Josh Wright when he was in the England squad, it's basically saying you're one of the best, if not the best, in your position at that age yeah. group. I think what it what it was at the time is I was 15, 16 and doing really, really well at the academy in Lons. And yeah. um, so my my the, the academy is one of like one of the best in France and a lot of my teammates were being scouted to go off and play for France. Yeah. So I got asked at one point, listen, would you take up French nationality? Because we'd really be interested in taking you off and putting you into our under-16 setup out in France. So I thought about it for a little bit and we, we actually did look into it with my mum and my dad. Uh, but at the time, being 16, um, still being a minor, I had to get what either one of my parents to actually sign up to dual nationality as well. All right. And looking back at it at the time we just didn't think it was it was right and basically from then we kind of reached out to uh, the club reached out to someone at the FA to say listen France really want to take on Taylor uh, if you can get someone out here to watch him or or, or whatnot he, he'd rather keep his English nationality and, and and give it a go and trying trying to get in the England squad yeah and it was something that I really really wanted to do because I was like 16 kind of Watching all my mates go off and play international football, having to yeah. sit there, although I had to wait one year, like it yeah. paid off in the end because I ended up, like you said, I got um, called into the squad, I think it was under 17s, and uh, they had the European Championships that year. So I kind of got like got a, an opportunity and, and I took it. I, I did really well in the first camp. Um, then it was, I think it was another camp, and we ended up going to the Euros in Malta in May. And that was just amazing, like looking back at it. It was my first ever taste of like international tournament football. Yeah. Um and looking at the squad that we had as well, like you just mentioned some of the names there, yeah. like Joe Gomez, Lewis Cook. I I could well, I could honestly I can get them all <laughs> yeah, you'll, be, you'll be sitting there like, Yeah, I know them all. Uh, <laughs> fantastic players like Pat Roberts, uh Dom Solanke, um yeah. Josh Onamar, who's at who's at Fulham now, uh, just just had like Freddie Woodman in goal. I can keep going if you want. Yeah, <laughs> go ahead. Um, <laughs> we had we had a fantastic age group, and even after that, we we then won that championship, um, which was obviously his memory for life. Yeah. Looking back now, you you still you always smile when you think about it, and you always have very very good memories of the family will be in there, and and you're playing for your country, like Josh Wright yeah. said you you're actually buzzing to to be putting on an England shirt and considering yourself as one of the best in the country. Yeah. And it was quite fun because my, obviously, academy was out in France, so it was something a bit different for, for the boys and for the coaches. And yeah. I think everyone kind of gelled, up, gelled really, really well. And that age group was special because even moving forward, under-18s, like you said, Tammy Abraham yeah. come in. Uh, Marcus Rashford was in there oh, as right. well. <laughs> And like you, you're looking at some top, top, top players. Fikayo Tomori came in at a later date. Yeah. Um, like some some brilliant players, and obviously it all ended unfortunately when I was uh, 19. I think it was the under 20s. Got a uh, got a bit of a difficult phone call from uh, the new manager that took over. He just said, "Listen, like I was I was captain at the time, and yeah. he just said, listen, I, I don't think you're good enough, and I'd rather take other players on." It, it was heartbreaking, really, because I played with that same age group from the under 16, 17, all the way up to yeah. 20. We were building towards the World Cup, and I felt like I was doing well. I felt like I was kind of comfortable and 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 part of that squad, if not a major part of it. And yeah, being left out before they went on to win the World Cup was uh, devastating. Yeah, how do you deal with that as a player? Because well, I'd imagine it is a massive confidence. Like, yeah, I think. At the time when it happened, I was 19 years old. I just joined Bristol City. I was there for six months. I had a fairly good six months, but the manager wanted me to go out on loan, just gain yeah. some first in football. And at the time, I went to Bury. So, listen, like, what an experience. Looking back on it now, it was so difficult. Mm. I was in a relegation scrap in a League One team. Uh, Sounds playing, familiar. Yeah, I played, I played right wing back. <laughs> Uh, for the whole second half of the season, and I, I, I struggled, I think, because it was my first like challenge. Yeah, 
come over from France uh, just thinking that everything's going to be like, it's going to be a fresh start, new club. Yeah. And all of a sudden you find yourself at Berry playing right wing back. Yeah. You're relegated back. Where all you're doing is watching the ball go over. Yeah, like that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, like I wasn't playing my best football. 100% mm. I wasn't. And uh, so what the manager at the time probably saw was, was right. Yeah. Like, but what I was kind of disappointed with is he'd never had the opportunity to see me as a as a centre back and yeah. to see me for England. So I I kind of took it on the chin, but it was so difficult, especially that summer. Just watching all the boys do so well, and, and they ended up winning the World Cup. Yeah. And under twenty level, which was an amazing achievement, and one hundred percent I wanted wanted to be part of it, but it, it just wasn't to be. So I kind of used it as a bit of motivation to to build myself up again although it, it took a bit of time after that still. yeah and um, I just I used it as fuel really yeah so a few years before obviously uh the Barry time you made your debut age 17 in a derby game against Lille when yeah. did you find out you was going to start and what was your first thoughts I found out in the morning actually the morning of the game so uh, we'd already been so I was at Lons we I think bottom or before last in the in the, in the French first division and like I was ready I was training with the first team and I just felt it was coming bit by bit yeah. but like you just said there it was the derby game and it was 70,000 fans it was like it's a massive massive game out in France yeah. Lons against Lille and uh, yeah I got, I got the nod in the in the morning because we'd already been relegated I think the, the manager kind of wanted to push one or two of us young ones through yeah um, so yeah, just got. I went down for breakfast in the morning, and the manager pulled me to one side. He said, "Listen, I'm going to start you, and I'm going to start you at right back." And I was like, "Oh, Jesus Christ! I've never <laughs> played right back before in my life. How yeah. am I going to how I'm going to cope with that kind of thing?" Yeah. Just he just, just said, "Listen, like, just I want you to enjoy it." And, and he was brilliant on that day. Um, it, it was even funny, like even in the first few minutes of the game, the ball went out for throwing. Obviously, having played centre mid or centre back my whole life, I didn't have to take the throw. <laughs> it was actually like a couple of seconds of just everyone waiting around, looking at me, waiting me to go and pick the ball up. And I, yeah. didn't, I was just in the zone. I just didn't even think. Um, I'd never taken a throw in before in my, in my life. I was like, what do I do here? Um, yeah. But no, it was fantastic. And like my mum, dad, my girlfriend at the time were all at the stadium. And, yeah. And it was kind of a big thing because uh, coming through the academy, I was kind of like a, a player that the fans wanted to see, and um, it, it was it was a massive moment for the club and for me, really. Yeah, and obviously you assisted your team's only goal that game. Yeah, I know, I know. I got a bit got a bit carried away with that. <laughs> I, just, uh, I don't know what happened. I just played a I played a half decent ball, and uh, uh, my teammate went on and scored, which got us one nil up. Like. <laughs> out of nowhere as well. It yeah, it was amazing. We ended up losing three one. Yeah, uh, but it was it was a fantastic experience. And then even after that, I ended up playing uh, playing four or five games until the end of the season. Yeah. So like you said, you cemented your place in the first team squad, and the next season you were subject to a ten million euro bid from Lyon. How would you deal with that at a young age? Because that's big money. Yeah. So what happened was at the end of that season. So I played the five, six games remaining and like, I was kind of fearless, a bit young kid on the block, yeah. uh, new, new kid in the team and it was a lot of attention and I kind of took it all on really well and I kept putting in the performances and that summer I remember receiving a phone call from uh, the director of football who was at Leon, and he just basically said, listen, like we've, we've monitored your games, we're looking to build like a, a half decent squad because we're getting into the Champions League and we'll be playing European football. And he just he basically just said like we we'd love to bring you on board. Uh, if we can strike a deal with Lons that would be brilliant. Yeah. And what what happened was it was a an initial bid went in. Um it was low, I'm gonna yeah. say three million euros, something like that. And Lons basically just turned around and laughed at it and said like no, like we won 10 million euros. So it was ridiculous what they were asking because yeah. a couple of summers before they just sold Varane, they sold Kondogbia, they had like some fantastic young players that they sold for big, big money. So 
they were being greedy really um and i think with my agent at the time we kind of thought about it and said well actually if we can get this done it would be a fantastic move like don't get me wrong i love the club but we're going down and leon are going to be playing champions league football no brainer yeah it's a no brainer so we we basically just sat tight and and listened to what the club had to say and, and they said listen we're not going to let you go because mm. we see you as an asset. We see you as a player for this season coming. And that Leon wouldn't match the money. Leon just said, basically, told, told Lons to piss off because it, it, yeah. they were asking for too much money. So it was ups, it was upsetting. But the minute I kind of knew, oh, well, it's not going to happen because because of whatever reason. I was 100% focused on just staying at Lons. And, and it was the club. Like I said, I'd been there for seven years. Yeah. I was... I was doing well. I'd obviously just come on the scene. I uh, was looking forward to a fresh start, fresh new season in the second division where I was probably guaranteed game time. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I just took it, like took that on the chin as well. And you just think, oh, well, it didn't happen. Yeah. Keep working hard and it will happen next summer or the year after. Yeah. And obviously uh, it's completely, well, not unrelated, but something we've learned as South End fans is you've always come across quite humble and obviously you're talking about that. Is that something you've always had or is that drilled into you by your parents, coaches? Or is that just uh, you as a person? I'm definitely going to say my parents. Yeah. Because my mum's my mom's probably around somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm definitely going to say my parents. I yeah. think I've been lucky enough to, to have uh, an amazing mum and an amazing dad. Yeah. Uh, not only that, it goes further than that. It goes to grandparents. It goes to aunt, uncles. Yeah. Um, and just always had like a, a, a good family support. Yeah. Uh, but also, I think just in terms of, like you said there, it's it's humble, but it's also just being aware that yeah. you are in a privileged position, and and yeah, just I I kind of be a, I try to be like that as much as possible, yeah, uh, on, on and off the pitch. Um, but yeah, that's a that's a compliment. So thank you. No worries. So the next season, like all young players, you had a bit of a dip in form. And you was told to play in a reserve game by a coach, but that didn't end too well. Can you talk a bit about what happened? Yeah, so the truth behind that story was we uh, started the season off really poorly, actually, in the second division. So we were like the massive club coming down and all of a sudden we were struggling. And I hadn't started a game. I think it was the first like four or five games. I was like on the bench, on the bench, on the bench, just waiting for an opportunity. Um and then, then one came in, in a cup game and everything went well. And I had a little run in the team. Yeah. So we, and we started to cr- like climb back up the table. And then I think after a couple of weeks or a couple of months, obviously there was another change up in the team, another dip of form. And, and I was left out. And I was left out for one, two, three, four, five games, six games. And it got to the point where I was kind of being left out of the squad now as yeah. well. We are approaching, approaching Christmas. And um, what happened was the manager at the time uh, basically just said, listen, I I want you to go back down with the reserves for a little bit, for a little while, go and get some games, go and go and like enjoy your football again and and come back. And and that was fine. Like, yeah, 100% I was gutted, but obviously all my mates were in the reserves. I knew all the coaches. It was, it was the academy as well. So I was going back there just to, to, to work again. And I think that was like the first time where, my confidence in terms of like playing as well was it took a hit because you're being asked to drop back down when you've been playing first team football and like you said you, you didn't have to move um, yeah. and you're being told listen go back and play with the, with the under 18s or the under 21s or so it it was difficult because then I could kind of feel the my frustration build up a little bit not only as like a general perspective and, and the whole situation, but it was also, I was getting frustrated at myself thinking, well, yeah. hold on a minute. I know how good I can be here. I just need to like, just need to keep doing it. But it just yeah. wasn't happening. Like there'd be a mistake in one game. There'd be like, I'd lose my marker in the other. It would be like repetitive mistakes where I just found myself like bit by bit on a slippery slope thinking, Oh God, like what's happening here? Yeah. I ended up playing in a, in a, in, in one of the reserve games and, I think it was on like a Tuesday night and uh, they had another game on the Friday so it was like quick succession yeah 
any time the reserve team were training, uh, first team wasn't. So I couldn't really like go in and ask the manager or or, or just see. Listen, Gaffer, do you want me to play again on Friday? What's happening? Yeah. So I rang the assistant as you do in football normally. Like you speak to, you can speak to the managers, but sometimes you probably get a more of a response from the assistants or the yeah. people that walk around them. Uh, so I just rang the assistant. I said, listen, like I played on Tuesday night. Um, I just said like we've we've got another game Friday. What what do you guys want me to do? Do you want me to come back up and train with the first team or stay down with the with the reserves? And basically, it just like oh, stay down with the reserves. We'll talk about it on Thursday. Yeah. But uh, by that time, we had already like done the prep for the game and everything. And, and yeah. the reserve team manager was basically saying, listen, like I haven't heard anything of you. I was like, no, not really. So we just said, listen, like I'll play. Yeah. I was nowhere near the first in squad and I played. Played the game um, and the next morning basically just absolutely got it. Like, yeah. The manager asked me, called me into his office and just said, like, you didn't come to me, you didn't ask me, you didn't. And definitely looking back on it, you think, like, why didn't I just pick the phone up and ring the manager straight yeah. away? Like, if you are 17 or 18 years old, just ring the manager, like. Yeah. At least, at least if he sees that he's missed the call or something like that, it would have been better. But obviously, when I said like, "Oh, but I spoke to the assistant and the the reserve team manager told me it was okay and I was playing and it was all like a bit up in the air. It was just such yeah. a confusion. But all that because I wanted to play a game of football. Like, yeah, it wasn't like I went on a night out the night yeah. before a game. Or I was doing stuff I shouldn't have been. It was like I was being punished basically for for wanting to play and especially yeah. when you're not around the first team for a while like you you need games you need to start playing and uh, yeah basically just got told there and then by the manager like you're 18 years old I can't like I can't have someone who's unreliable and I was just like whoa like where's where's all this coming from at Gaffer yeah. I'm really sorry. like I just thought it was a miscommunication I thought I was in the team like yeah and yeah, just got sent back down to the like reserve team dressing room, sent back down to reserve team training full time. And and at the time, it was kind of how I felt. It was a few people at the club. Uh, I'm talking like coaches or we, we had like a very difficult um, director of football at the time. He was just trying to like knock, knock me down a little bit more, a little bit more, a little yeah. bit more. But kind of not. They, I, I'd kind of say they were enjoying watching it happen mm. and using me as an example to say like listen kids when you get to where you want to get to like don't kind of don't have the wrong attitude and because otherwise you're on a slippery slope look at Taylor and it was like yeah. hold on a minute. I haven't had a bad attitude I've yeah. committed myself to the club as much as I could <laughs> I'm just being told by a manager to go and train with a reserve team from then like you get all the reserve team lads who, who were just like looking at you saying what are you doing here yeah. <laughs> and from that point you, you I just started to, to really get frustrated with the club because you go from six months ago them turning down bids to let me go to Leon yeah to then them basically pushing me down and it was like hold on a minute even if I'm not playing well if I'm not confident or just like help me work with me a bit yeah. more and I think at one point I was working so hard and it just wasn't happening and the frustration was building up and it just like yeah steamed over yeah exactly and uh, it it just got too much in the end really yeah so um eventually that manager was sacked and replaced by alan casanova did you originally yeah. feel like you had a chance to prove yourself again and get back into yeah, the first team definitely. definitely i remember i remember being on the being on a uh, being on a video call with someone and he's just said, oh, have you seen the news? Uh, Lons has sacked my manager and he's being replaced by a new manager. So I'm like, oh my God, like, that's the best news. <laughs> I'm, I'm obviously like grateful to that manager for giving me my debut, but yeah. at the end of the day, I, I need to like kick on. Because I was playing, I was started to, obviously I, I dipped massively and started to play well again, build myself up. And we went into pre-season and the uh, new manager came in. So fantastic, like, gonna get another chance you're gonna like the club the club basically sat me down and said listen we're committing to to pushing you forward again like we're sorry it's this year probably didn't work out the way we all wanted it to but we're yeah. gonna push on like we're really gonna work with you fantastic and uh, 
I went away with England for the yeah. under 19 Euros. And that was like three weeks or four weeks out of the pre-season. I got away. We, we got knocked out in the semi-finals. We lost to Italy. Came home. And basically ready to go. Raring to go. And after two days of training, the manager pulls me in and just says, like, I don't, don't really rate you. Uh, and we've had an offer. We've had an offer from Bristol City that we're willing to take. I was just like, oh, Wow. And he was basically using comparisons as well, which were a bit like boys that I'd always been in front of at the club. Yeah. That were maybe two or three years younger than me. And he was basically saying, like, I think he's better than you. Or I think he's got more potential than you. I think. And it was like, you're fighting and never, like, never, you're never going to win. You're yeah. never, ever going to win. And it was, it got to the point where I basically said, well, with all due respect, like, I think I can prove you wrong and I'd like to see. Yeah, and basically, I just got put in a position where I got told, "Listen, either you leave and we take the money, which the club needed at the time, yeah, uh, or you can stay here, but you won't play for me." Cool. Like, do you take the risk? Like, of, uh, obviously, that like, unbelievable like situation to find myself in because I wanted, I loved the club, like I did absolutely love the club, and yeah. um, just being told by someone who's like not even really seen you play it was, it was difficult it that was really difficult and then obviously having spoken to the manager at bristol city and everything i just said like i'm i'm going i need this new challenge and i can't sit around here and have another blank year so yeah. i didn't play all the year before i can sit around and not play again um no matter how much i back myself like i, I just said i, I I need a new challenge and, and Bristol City kind of fell into place nicely because it was a young manager building a young squad. Um, and like, listen, I, I just needed out. I needed to get out and, and, and obviously a championship club. Brilliant. Yeah. Like, get me there and I want to test myself at an even higher level, which is what I did. Yeah. What was your first impressions of the club? I think... Uh, Bristol City at the time had just built the stadium. They just had the the, the new state, the stadium renovated, yeah. uh, which was like well, it still is now. It's an amazing sort of stadium, great yeah. venue. Um, and then, like I said, the the young manager building the young squad, uh, looking towards the future, really exciting um, setup. And not only that, you, you look at the, Bristol as a place. It's an amazing place to live. Um, and they're doing everything with the owner. The owner's got amazing stability and, and obviously invests so much time and effort into the club, him and his family. Uh, and it, everything's moving in the right direction. It's got the potential to be such, such a big club. Yeah. Um, and they're doing things right. They're building a stadium. They're uh, building a brand new training ground that hopefully should be finished before the end of the year, uh, if not the beginning of next. And it's it was just exciting, really. This is going back. Uh, four years now um yeah. and listen like probably the the best decision I, i've ever made because i needed to get out of lons and, and i'm part even still to this day of, of something exciting at bristol yeah definitely and then in your first six months you played quite regularly but yeah. you was blamed for a late defeat to Ipswich, and less than a week later you were sent to bury what was going through your head um <laughs> Difficult again because, like I said, I think I went from such a low lons to a high. Like signing for Bristol City, playing, playing quite well, and all of a sudden, like bang, yeah. it hits you. And where football's got this habit of just kicking you in the teeth when you when you expect the least. And you looking back on it now, definitely the goal I was to blame for. We were in a such a sticky position because we'd lost like 10, 12 games. Um, in the space of 15 or something like that the, the manager was obviously needing a win and, and we we wanted a win as a team and uh, listen it was an unfortunate one where I slipped and um, the the person I was marking ends up scoring a goal and like you said there like it goes so quick three days later yeah. you're being told and then you, you need to go out and get games you need to go out and play on a regular basis to, to not make those mistakes anymore which is which is true and uh, yeah, three days later, I was up in Manchester uh, at Bury, my first ever own. Yeah. Um, was the manager there for you or was it literally just you're off to Bury? 
deal with it? Uh, I think the the manager was there, um, and it, it's such a difficult one sometimes when, especially when I come over and obviously you're expecting to play, you're expecting to learn and develop. And like you said, like I played quite a few games and made a few appearances in the league in the cup, and I was just trying to like find my feet a bit. Championship football takes some time to get used to. Yeah. Um, I just yeah like finding my feet and kind of felt listen I'm getting a bit comfortable here this is this is good like I'm enjoying it I'm enjoying my football and all of a sudden like you've got to move again um, oh you joining yeah sorry oh sorry <laughs> you've got to join join a new team um so it's it's difficult but I think the manager like sat me down and just said listen this is in your best interest uh, yeah. You need to come and get games, you need to develop, especially if you're going to be a defender here in England. You need to work on a lot of stuff that you probably did, didn't out over in France. And it, it was all like professionally done. You don't look at it and yeah. think, Jesus Christ, why did you send me out on loan? Like, yeah. I didn't need that. Looking back on it now, like I've had uh, f- this is my full flown spell now. Yeah. So, as a defender, I think you, you've got to go out and gain that experience. It's quite rare that you see a defender go straight into the team have a fantastic career at the club like yeah it, it is quite rare especially at the bigger clubs now where there's more pressure uh pressure on clubs pressures on teams pressures yeah. on managers where you, you need to be reliable and you, you need to show that you have you had the experience you gain the experience and that you're ready to kick on yeah how what's your thoughts on the low market because because like you said you've had four uh, loan spells now obviously teams like Chelsea use it religiously what do you think do you think it can be a good and a bad thing oh definitely I think it can be or obviously I've seen the highs and the lows of it as well yeah. um but at the end of the day I'm coming close to like 200 games now because of it yeah. which I wouldn't wouldn't have had if I didn't go out on loan and like at the age of 23 200 games as a centre-back or you need like you need games and that yeah. that is a good amount of games when when I look at some of the boys that I know that are at bigger clubs for example that have maybe been in and around the first team fine but haven't really like racked up games yeah um, it's all it's all about just building a career and making yeah. sure that as a center back at the age of 23 24 25 when you're ready to really really kick on and, and you can show that you've gained that experience over the years and that you are reliable and a manager can trust you and put you in his team every week and and like our, our manager at Bristol City always uses the term like I pick my team as if my daughter's life depended on it and it's so true like yeah going out there every week to 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 play for the play for the club but you're also playing for the manager and you've got to show him that like I'm ready yeah, definitely. So, like you said earlier, you went to Bury, and then that season, not only did you um, lose your Eng- England space, it wasn't going too well at Bury. Was there a point where you felt like giving up? Oh, definitely. I think after that, um, after that season. So, like you said, I went on loan to Bury. I was playing every week, and I, I, I did. I did okay. I was playing right wing back. Of, yeah, wasn't the best football I've ever played in the world, but I, I, I did okay and. Yeah, just enjoyed obviously discovering Manchester as well. Like, um, and I look at it now and think, wow, like I I got through that. And yeah. at the end, that, at the end of that season, it was difficult because I was I was quite lonely up there as well. I didn't really know anyone. Like, mm. I'd never really been to Manchester uh, and lived in Manchester at all. And the family were coming up quite often. And sometimes just your mood, like you'd play on the Saturday, you'd have a terrible mood all week and I got myself into a bit of a bit of a uh, I'd say sad state because I just wasn't really enjoying it and at the end of that season I actually reached out uh, to my agent at the time and to to someone he knew uh, who's a like a mental coach and I just said like I'm actually reaching out now for help because I feel this way I feel down. I feel uh, that uh, obviously my mood's really affected by the football. Uh, I can't really like switch off when I have to. I'm always thinking yeah. about it, and and I, and I was down. I was down. I was uh, in a in a in a bad state, I'd say, and I, I just needed someone to kind of talk me through it. I just yeah. said like I'm not I'm not throwing the word depression out. I'm not like I'm not saying it was that serious, but I'm just saying like, I needed something to kind of give me a little spark again and find yeah. that motivation to 
to to kick on and keep going because like I said I've had a, I've quite a few kicks in the teeth and quite a few downs um it was kind of I was kind of looking at it thinking well is this really what I want to be doing am I really cut out for this am I good enough for it like are people actually saying I don't think you're good enough or I don't think you're good enough for this team you're going on loan or and it's like you're looking at it and I was doubting myself definitely and I think that was the, the probably the lowest point in in my career uh in terms of like on how I was feeling uh, although like I said I was playing every week you're still having to go out and play and perform yeah. and, and it, it, it took its toll definitely because I was feeling that way off the pitch it took its toll on the pitch and it kind of um after a couple of months I just I remember having a conversation with my mum where I just said like I need to need to get some help here and yeah. honestly like the the best thing ever happened that I was introduced to my mental coach called Jamie Edwards and he just flipped it upside down completely for me. Um, yeah. Just made me like see uh, life in general, not just football, from a totally different perspective. And that honestly like picked me up off the ground and off I went. You know what I mean? Yeah. So would you say that it definitely affected your mental health then, your time at Berry? I wouldn't say my time at Berry did. I'd just say it was at that time. In general. It, it happened at that time. I just think it was an accumulation of like the last year, 18 months at Lons where like I got in, got into such a, like a, a down state where I just kind of thought, okay, well, if I move away from Lons, it will go away. But it obviously didn't. It was yeah. still there because I hadn't, I hadn't focused on it and I hadn't worked on it in my mind it was always going to come back the minute yeah. there was a dip it wasn't just a dip to come back up it was like a, a like a, I'm using the term again like slippery slope it's yeah. downward spiral you get yourself into such a such a state where it's never your fault it's always someone else's and it's easy to point fingers and, but I just said like listen I need to point a finger at myself first and, and kind of I need to learn from this and every time there is a dip you got to make sure that you bounce back quickly and that's how you'll keep moving forward because if you move <laughs> yeah, if you if you if you keep letting it get the best of you then how are you going to how are you going to cope with that for for a whole career and like the mental coaching and and that side of uh, my game like uh, I'm never ever going to stop that now whether that's yeah. football whether that uh, after football um it's something that I rely on on a daily basis now yeah um so the next season you joined Cheltenham on loan am I right in thinking Cheltenham's manager at the time was Lee Johnson's dad yeah Gary Johnson yeah, yeah so how I was think that experience in my whole I think in my whole young career so far that was probably the year that I learned the most about myself yeah and I learned the most football wise it was what it was it was league two football and with all due respect to everyone who's ever played League Two football, to tell you like it's not the best. Yeah. Like in terms of football, it is pretty direct. It is physical. It's yeah. It's Get quite the job. Ugly. Most most games are gritty and and looking back at it, I played forty games. Yeah. I played forty games, and that was I think a point where I kind of looked at myself and said, "Well, I've gone from being England captain, uh, uh, under ninety, under twenty age group." Uh, playing for Bristol City to all of a sudden you're in the bottom half of the table in League Two with Cheltenham mm. and you're playing bad. Whose fault is it? Like, yeah. and that was me. That was me just looking at myself, thinking, right, I need to, I need to kick up the arse here, or like, I need to kick on and and kind of take my game to the next level because I'm, I was still trying to play like a a French under 18 in league two I yeah. was getting caught I was trying to bring the ball out I was instead of no like just playing men's football and and doing the right things and making the right decisions I was still playing like a boy so I yeah. think that year definitely made me transition from like a boy to a man where like I said not only did I learn a lot about football and, and Gary Johnson like I've got so much respect for him like what a character uh, yeah. on, on on and off the pitch um and, and even now, obviously, he's, he still pops into the training ground at Bristol. Or I still see him on a regular basis. And he, he looks at me and he goes, oh, like, I didn't think you had it in you. Like, he, he, he laughs about it, but I know he thinks it as well because I was yeah. 
I was I just didn't adapt to to that football that year at all at yeah. all and it taught me a lot don't get me wrong but it just wasn't amazing for me that year and I think even when you I started the mental coaching I started pointing the finger at myself and saying that I really want to really want to kick on like never in a million years did I think it would maybe take another year for it to like start happening yeah uh, it, it definitely didn't happen overnight that's for sure definitely and then we're going to move on to the start of last season your <laughs> at Bristol City did you finally feel like you had a chance to kick on in the first team so after the season at Cheltenham I got told uh basically that uh, I needed to do more uh that my season at Cheltenham wasn't good enough and that if I wanted to play at Bristol City I'm either going to have to to show uh, a lot more character and a lot more ability or if not I'd, I'd have to move on and and I knew that my yeah. parents knew that my agent knew that everyone I knew it I knew yeah. it so when I went back that pre-season I, I just had to make sure that I showed everyone like I actually belong here like yeah. even if it is for pre-season for six weeks or whatever it is I belong here and this is where I believe I can play and like that was that was the pre-season where I, I got so fit, I came back, I did well, and I was playing well. And um, there's even a video, and it's, it always makes me smile when I see it because the, the gaffer who, like, three or four months before was telling me that he wasn't happy, was then saying, like, listen, like, well done. I, I can see there's a change in your game, there's a change in your maturity. Uh, the way you've approached this preseason was brilliant, and I'm really happy with you. This is probably, like, the best I've seen you. And that was obviously, like, a boost, a massive boost for me because we, at the time, uh, Bristol City, we signed Adam Webster, who just joined the team, like fantastic player. Uh, and there was there was a space, there was like an opportunity to to kind of get in the team or in and around the team. I was I was doing everything right, uh, performing well, and I was so unlucky because I um I have ruptured uh, some of my ankle ligaments, and uh, it kind of put me back five weeks, six weeks. Yeah. And uh, that was a tough one to take because just as the season was getting started, I was in a boot. So this is like throughout the whole of August. And yeah. I got back, got back training, got back to fitness. And um, I, was, I was even on the bench. I was on the bench. Uh, we were away to QPR. I was like, I, I'm, I'm here, I'm back. Do you know what yeah. I mean? I mean around this is a lot of hard work starting to pay off. Don't get me wrong. It was the first step on a very, very long ladder. But for me, it was amazing. Yep. And uh, and it was it was brilliant. I was just taking everything in. And uh, Bristol City had the opportunity to bring in Thomas Callas on loan from Chelsea. Yeah. Uh, so the manager just kind of sat me down and said, "Listen, as a club, we have the opportunity to bring in Thomas Callas, who's like proven Championship defender, done uh, X amount of years with Chelsea, like someone that we really really like." And listen, you're a fantastic player, of course. I, I, who was I? Do you know what I mean? I've just come from Cheltenham. Yeah. Um, and the the manager just said, "Listen, we we think that alone would be the best option for you." Yeah. Um, so we we kind of both agreed on that, and and just said, "Listen, if if I can get the right club and get, and get me out on loan, then then brilliant. As long as the manager's now like happy with me, it's yeah. kind of a, it's a good loan. It's a positive loan rather than get out because I don't think you're good enough. It was more yeah. get out, learn some games, and come back and show me that and that you're that you're capable of doing it." Yeah. And um, the the loan to South End came about, where South End already had Sean Mikulski on loan from Bristol City, and uh, I was lucky because previously I'd worked with Chris Powell a couple of times during England camps when we were under 17s, 18s. Like, yeah, so I knew I knew the manager, and uh, Bristol City basically just said, "Would you be interested in taking Taylor Moore on loan?" And in all honesty, like, nobody would. No, like not one, not one club uh, kind of turned around and said yes, which was understandable judging from my games at Bury and at Cheltenham. Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have taken myself. Do you know what I mean? Like, so uh, people were just coming back. No, 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 no. And basically, Southend just said, "Listen, we'll we'll take Taylor, but we can't really guarantee you that he'll play because yeah. we've got some good defenders here. Obviously, Michael Turner, John White was there." Um, Rob Keenan was at the club, um, yeah. although he was injured. Yeah, I uh, can't remember Harry Kipriano as well. Yeah, uh, so like 
some some good defenders and, and they basically said, listen, we'll take Taylor, but we can't really guarantee that he's going to play. And I just said, I said to my agent, like, South End, I said, get me, like, get me there. Go, make, make sure I get there and don't worry, like, I'll, I'll make sure I play, even if it takes a couple of weeks, like, I'll, I will yeah. get in the team, don't worry. And I was so confident, like, that pre-season, after having a good pre-season, a boost from the manager at Bristol City, a kick up, kick up the backside from my agent and my parents to say, like, you need to do more. And obviously South End, so back in Essex, back home, um, just everything fell into place nicely that summer. And yeah. yeah, like got got myself down to South End, and uh, yeah, as you as you know, like fell in love with it. Obviously, that massive smile on my face just just said, "Oh, like Gaffer, like thanks, thank, like thanks yeah. for having me." You know I mean, this is before I even got started. I was just saying, like, "Thank you, thanks yeah. for the opportunity." Like I'm buzzing. Like, thank yeah. Uh, you probably felt that in October and then it got to like April, <laughs> May and you're like, fucking, I can't wait to see the back of this kid. Um, like, I'm fed up with people doubting me. I'm fed up with people actually trying to to knock me down or trying to 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 tell me that I'm not good enough. Gillian, um, at <coughs> um, what goes through your head about that day? <laughs> yeah. Obviously, I'm going to talk about him because otherwise he'll, he'll, he'll moan if I don't. Sam Hart. <laughs> Just... Like what happened, Jesus Christ! I've I've never felt so low in my yeah. life. Did you think he deserved a sack? No. <laughs> Ref, <Yeah. laughs> there's that chant at the end saying we want you to stay, and you kind of like, oh my God, where do I put myself? Where do I put myself? Yeah. When yeah. all I wanted to do was get up and be like, yes, me too, me too. Do you know what I mean? Would you like to return to Southend one day? <laughs> 